Okay, so in the last part, we went over creating your own design, creating your buttons, making sure you have everything the correct instance name and symbol name. So let's go ahead and start talking about actually creating these classes. So um, in the previous video, we did create this class with your own domain name, my domain name, or josephlebrec.com. And this is for the quiz game class. And you did it by editing the class definition here. Now, what that looks like is once you edit that class definition, make sure it's animate CC and I'll put com dot my domain dot quiz game. Once you do that, it's going to automatically add some script in there for you. So you might be reading the book and saying, oh, I have to type this. No, if you did it correctly, it will already have that stuff. And now you just have to start adding your constructor code and importing other things here. So let me go Oh, for the question bank, though, um, when you create it, we did it a different way. We went to file new and then we went to action script 3.0 class. And then you can see it looks almost exactly the same. Click on animate, add your class name, make sure it says question bank at the end and then click OK. And you should get um, something that looks like this. So as we start going through the chapter, let's start working through this now. The thing that kind of is irritating is that he gives you this code and he does give it to you in proper order. Um, but when you look at the end of the chapter at all the code, it's not that it, you're working from the top down. It's kind of you place that code in different positions. Um, so you're going to want to look at that very end of the chapter to make sure that you're putting the code in the right place. So if I look at the quiz game.as, um, and remember that both the question bank and the quiz game should be in a directory, aka folder called com. And then that has a folder with your domain. So whatever your domain is here, or if you used mine or Joseph's, and then you're going to have question bank and quiz game .as. You can open up both of those so that you can work on them. And in the first couple of steps, when you're adding code, um, what he's going to have you do is he's going to have you call these in. So you're going to have um, Im import flash display. And then the ones that we're really looking at is this text and display of simple buttons. So text field and simple button. And then we defined those here. So we have these variables that we define in here. So we have two simple buttons in our document or our app. And we need to make sure that they have the instance name of whatever their actual instance name was back here. So if I click on this true button, the instance name is true lowercase and then capital B and then T TN in lowercase. There's no spaces or anything like that. So you need to make sure that this is exactly matching. Same thing with the instance name for the false button. And then we call the variable for the text field. Um, and we have question text and status message, which again, if I click on question text and status message, ma the status message, the instance name is exactly the same. So make sure you add those in there and that you've got it right. If you changed your instance names, that's okay. Just make sure that they match in your script. Okay. So once you do that, you're going to do this status message text is a blank array here. And that basically means that your status message that has these ellipses, that's just placeholder text. And this is going to tell them when it's incorrect or correct. And if the first time they get into their app, they haven't even answered a question, it's going to be weird for them to see just the three dots or incorrect or correct. So basically what you're writing here is you're saying that the first thing that it the status message should look like is empty. It should have no answer, no text in it when we first start the app. Okay, so the other part of this is that you have to create the JSON file. Now I gave you the JSON file and the student files, um, but you can create this with any basic code editing program. So on a Mac, everybody has automatically on their computer something called text edit. On a PC, you have a program called Notepad. Those are really basic programs, but they are free and already installed on your computer. So you can use those to edit um, the JSON file or create a JSON file. So I can right click and choose open with, and this will usually show me what programs can edit code. Now, for some reason, mine says Excel can open it. I, I don't, I've never seen that, but here I have text edit. Text Wrangler is a free one that has some code hinting and coloring that you can download from the internet for a Mac. 
For PC people, if you do Notepad++, that is a free program you can download to your computer that has some code hinting and is a lot easier to work with. If you have the Creative Cloud, you might have Adobe Edge Code CC. So this is the one that's gonna open for me, or you can download it or I'll open that code in Dreamweaver and edit that as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and just open this questions.json. And for this one, I've already created it for you because I figured you wouldn't have a lot of time and you wouldn't want to type all this, but basically it's saying this, these are all the questions and for each curly brace set, this is a new question. So we're defining it as one of the questions and then this is the text of the question. Flash professional can output to HTML5 canvas. So this entire thing is a statement and then we define it as a true and false question and then we say whether or not it's actually true or false. So you are not going to use the Flash or Animate CC or whatever he created. I just gave you this file so that you can come in here and change the question. So if again, you're doing a Denver Broncos quiz app, you can say, who was the quarterback during the first time or the first time we won the Super Bowl? So, well, that's not a true or false question, is it? So you can say, um, John Elway was the quarterback the first time the Broncos won the Super Bowl. And then you would choose true or false, put true in there for this one because that is true. All right. So you can just edit this on your own and then save it. Now, I kept the questions.json exactly the way it was just in case. So if you do that, just make sure to resave your version with a different name that kind of indicates that this is like the Broncos dash questions or type dash questions, etc. Okay, so once you've created that um, JSON file, we actually have to load the data. So that's gonna be done in the question bank.as action script. And so it goes over all of the different things that you should type into this question bank.as, the things that we need to import into it. And then notice here that it's gonna say, we gotta load or request a URL and then load it. And then when you get to the JSON or JSON URL string, it says it's in a folder called data or a directory, he always uses that word, directory called data. And then this forward slash means that it's it's a folder. So the data folder, look for the file called type-questions.json. And all of this is in, a, in quotes. So just make sure again that your folder structure is matching. So you should have a folder called data and inside or data, whatever, Inside of that, you should have your questions file. And whatever that questions file name is, if it was called Broncos-questions, then make sure you type Broncos-questions here. If you still just want it to be called questions so it looks exactly like the book, that's fine. Just make sure your questions are your own questions and not the ones that, that he created for this um, assignment. Okay. So in terms of the rest of this code, it's just a matter of following along with the book and typing it exactly. If you see things aren't turning color the way it um, should, maybe you see this private function that you created here and then this one isn't turning colors. There might be some error wrong, like something you mistyped or forgot or you didn't close this one up here, something of that nature. So just watch for that color coding and just compare yours to mine, like just put it side by side with this video so you can see if it's right. And notice that I have things out of um, order than what he maybe talks about him in the book, but that's because um, by the end of it, this is what the actual order should look like. So I know it's kind of confusing in that regard, but so right now the quiz game.as that is already tied to our app because we've tied it in the class here. But this question bank.as it's not tied to anything right now. It is loading the JSON file and it's allowing us to load a JSON file, but it's not tied into the quiz game or or to the actual FLA file. So in the next step we need to actually integrate the question bank class. So in the book, he actually breaks this up. Like he doesn't start loading these private functions um, until after he comes back into the quiz game.as. And this is where you kind of tie that question bank in with the quiz game.as. 
So you load that question bank into quizgame.as and then he has you doing like the question bank and the array and all that stuff. But we haven't created the array at this point. Um, and then he'll go back to the question bank and then have you um, creating the array. So how you do it is kind of, um, you know, follow along with him and type exactly the code, but always be checking it against the book where he has all the code written so you know which order to put it in, or you can check it against mine, or you can just type all this code in here right now, and then just make sure that you follow along with the book and with me to make sure that anything that was like a change, like you name this JSON file something different, that you edit it here. Okay, so this is the full question bank dot as um, you should see three curly braces at the end look for color coding this should be different if you named it differently this should be your domain name or joseph's or mine whatever you want to use for it it can even be generic like my domain um, so just make sure that's matching and that's matching whatever you have in your folder structure here and your class name so i know i keep saying that but just in case okay so then when you come back into the quiz game, um, it's going to keep doing things like the question max and the question count. And so that's going to help you with um, how many questions are going to happen in the game and what their point values are. Um, and as you keep going through, it'll say when you get to 100 out of 100 points and then the game over. And so you see all of these. These are the answers that are going to come into the status message correct or wrong. So if it's basically saying if the current answer is true, then put correct. If else, if it's not true, then put wrong. So it's that's where it's going to come in and say, you know, yes or no, you got it right or wrong. Same thing if the current answer is false and they clicked false, then it's going to say correct. If they if else, which means they didn't click false, they must have clicked true, then it's going to say wrong. So as you go through here, this is kind of, you know, yeah, you're like, whoa, curly braces and then not so curly braces and all these different call and functions and variables and classes, but just follow along with the action script and all of this should be pretty much the same um, as what, um, I don't think there's any, and I, th I don't think there's any kind of like variables in here. It's that domain that can be the variable if you've changed that. Um, and unless you change like instance names, which hopefully you didn't because it make make things a little bit harder. Um, but just make sure that the instance names, whatever you used is what is happening in code. So if you used what he used, then your code is going to match his code, which matches my code. So um, I think that's it. So make sure that you look at yours based on the book and based on mine and pause this in here and look for any kind of weird if you miss one semicolon, it can mess everything up. So check that and we will continue with the last part of this video.